Welcome to Mythical, the podcast that wanders the dark and fantastical pages of fairy tales. This season, all the fairy tales come from the Brothers Grimm. As it is now the month of October, the stories I read will focus on tricks, treats, and transformations in preparation for Halloween. This week's story is The Frog Prince. Before I begin, I would like to introduce this week's podcast partner. The podcast featured today is Get Grim, another fairy tale podcast, but this one is more appropriate for younger ears. Hello, I'm Kayla Knight, the host of Get Grim a weekly podcast for the miniature folklorist or teller of tales in your life. Each week, I adventure to adapt several tales around a central theme and share them with my audience, along with my own commentary and background on each story. New episodes are released every Saturday, and I can be found on Apple iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. Today, to start our Halloween month, I have a treat for you, which I will reveal after reading The Frog Prince. I am the narrator, and I'll begin as all good stories should, with Once Upon a Time. Once upon a time, there was a king who had three daughters, and in his courtyard there was a well with beautiful clear water. On a hot summer's day, The eldest daughter went down to the well and scooped out a glass full of water. However, when she looked at it and held it up to the sun, she saw that the water was murky. She found this very unusual and wanted to scoop out another glass when a frog stirred in the water, stuck his head up high, and finally jumped on to the edge of the well, where he spoke. If you will be my sweetheart, my dear... I'll get you water clearer than clear. Oh, who'd ever want to be a nasty frog's sweetheart? She cried out and ran away. Then she told her sisters there was an odd frog down at the well that made the water murky. The second sister became curious, and so she went down to the well and scooped a glass of water for herself, but it was just as murky as her sister's glass, so she wasn't able to drink it. Are they sure the frog is the one who's making the water murky? I mean, this was olden times. Maybe the water's just dirty. I mean, you know that they put all sorts of gross things in their water. Once again, however, the frog was on the edge of the well and said, If you'll be my sweetheart, my dear, I'll give you water clearer than clear. Do you think that would suit me? The princess replied and ran away. Finally, the third sister went, and things were no better. But when the frog spoke, If you will be my sweetheart, my dear, I'll give you water clearer than clear. She replied, Yes, why not? I'll be your sweetheart. Get me some clear water. However, she thought, That won't do any harm. I can speak to him just as I please. A dumb frog can never become my sweetheart. How common are talking animals in their world? It must be very common. They don't seem too shocked that he can talk to them. They just think he's gross because he's a frog. And a dumb frog. But he's a talking frog. He can't be that dumb if he's also controlling the water. It's probably just magic. Meanwhile, the frog had jumped back into the water And when she scooped up some water a second time, it was so clear that the sun nearly gleamed with joy in the glass. Then she drank and quenched her thirst and also brought her sisters some of the water. It's a very interesting power to have, though. Change water from clear to murky or back. Why were you so simple-minded and afraid of the frog? She said to them, and afterward, the princess didn't think anything more about it and went happily to bed. However, after she had been lying there for a while, and couldn't fall asleep, 
she suddenly heard some scratching on the door and then some singing. Open up, open up, princess youngest daughter. Don't you remember what you said when I sat on the well on the water's edge? You wanted to be my sweetheart, my dear, and I give you water clearer than clear. Oh, that's my sweetheart, the frog, the princess said, and since I gave him my word, I'll open the door. For thinking that her word wouldn't do any harm, I thought that she would be more hesitant to let the frog in. She'd be a bit more, no, I'm not going to do that. Her word means something. So she got out of bed, opened the door a little, and then lay back down in the bed. The frog hopped after her and jumped on the bed down by her feet and remained there. When the night was over and morning dawned, the frog sprang off the bed and went out through the door. The next evening, when the princess was once again lying in bed, there was some scratching and singing at the door once more. The princess opened the door and the frog lay in the bed at her feet until it turned day. On the third evening, the frog came just like he had done the previous evenings. Why does he go away in the morning? Also, it's very interesting that to him, being a sweetheart means just sharing a bed. This is the last time that I'll open the door to you, the princess said to him. In the future, there will be no more of this. Then the frog jumped and crawled under her pillow, and the princess fell asleep. Oh, he changed positions. When she woke up the next morning, she thought the frog would hop off again. Instead, she saw a handsome young prince standing before her, and he told her that he had been the bewitched frog, and that she had saved him because she had promised to be his sweetheart. If it was just the promise the frog needed, she promised him three days ago. Why did this magic have a lag effect? Then... The two of them went to the king, who gave them his blessing, and a wedding was held. Meanwhile, the two other sisters were angry with themselves, because they had not taken the frog to be their sweetheart. The end. The moral of today's story is, be kind to animals. They could be magic, and secretly very attractive. I find it very funny that the sisters were so disappointed that they didn't agree to be the frog's sweetheart. I can just imagine them going around now, and any time there is a talking animal, wishing so much for that animal to also be an enchanted prince, that they go around making deals with animals. I'm sure that will always turn out great. For today's treat, I'm going to read you a second story. In the final published version of the Brothers Grimm's works, there is no story titled the Frog Prince, but in both the first and last versions, there is a story titled The Frog King, or Iron Henry. This story is very similar to The Frog Prince in that it has an enchanted frog that requires a princess to help break his curse. In The Frog King, there are more elements that we closely associate with the story of The Frog Prince, such as the golden ball that falls into the well only one princess coming down to the well, and her disgust with the frog, and the frog asking for more things in return for retrieving the ball from the well. There is still no magical kiss in the frog king, but rather the frog is thrown against the wall before returning to human form. There is also the addition of the frog prince's faithful servant, Henry, who had iron bands put around his heart after his master was cursed, so that it wouldn't break from sadness. The version of the Frog King or Iron Henry that I will read is from the final published works of the Brothers Grimm, Once Upon a Time. In olden times, when wishing still helped, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful, but the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself which had seen so many things, was always filled with amazement each time it cast its rays upon her face. Now, there was a great dark forest near the king's castle, and in this forest, beneath an old linden tree, 
was a well whenever the days were very hot the king's daughter would go into this forest and sit down by the edge of the cool well if she became bored she would take her golden ball throw it in the air and catch it more than anything else she loved playing with this ball i love that opening line so much when wishing still helped it's so bittersweet there really wasn't anything for these people to do for fun in olden times if the princess's most joyous times came from throwing a ball up into the air and catching it though that is points for simple pleasures one day it so happened that the ball did not fall back into the princess's little hand as she reached out to catch it instead it bounced right by her and rolled straight into the water the princess followed it with her eyes but the ball disappeared and the well was deep, so very deep, that she could not see the bottom. She began to cry, and she cried louder and louder, for there was nothing that could comfort her. I'm surprised the ball hadn't rolled into the well at an earlier time, considering how many times she played with the ball by the well. As she sat there, grieving over her loss, a voice called out to her, What's the matter, princess? Your tears could move even a stone to pity she looked around to see where the voice was coming from and saw a frog sticking his thick ugly head out of the water oh it's you you old water splasher she said i'm crying because my golden ball has fallen into the well be quiet and stop crying the frog responded i'm sure i can help you but what will you give me if i fetch your plaything whatever you like dear frog she said my clothes, my pearls and jewels, even the golden crown I'm wearing on my head. I don't want your clothes, your pearls and jewels, or your golden crown. The frog responded, But if you will love me, and let me be your companion and playmate, and let me sit beside you at the table, eat from your little golden plate, drink out of your little cup, and sleep in your little bed, if you promise me all that, I'll dive down and retrieve your golden ball. Oh, yes, she said. I'll promise you anything you want, if only you'll bring back the ball. However, she thought, what nonsense that stupid frog talks. He just sits in the water croaking with the rest of the frogs. How can he expect a human being to accept him as a companion? Once the frog had her promise, he dipped his head under the water, dived downward, and soon came paddling back to the surface with the ball in his mouth. When he threw it onto the grass, the princess was so delighted to see her beautiful plaything again that she picked it up and ran off with it. That sounds more like a princess and a child, just so excited that their toy is back. They take off and forget all about who's around them. Wait, wait cried the frog. Take me with you. I can't run like you. He croaked as loudly as he could. But what good did it do? She paid no attention to him. Instead, she rushed home and soon forgot about the poor frog who had to climb back down into his well. The next day, as she sat at the table with the king and his courtiers and ate from her little golden plate, something came splish splash splish splash right up the marble steps when it reached the top it knocked at the door and cried out princess youngest daughter open up she ran to see who was outside but when she opened the door and saw the frog she quickly slammed the door shut and went back to the table in a state of fright the king could clearly see her heart was thumping and said my child what are you afraid of? Has a giant come to get you? Oh, no, she answered. It's not a giant, but a nasty frog. What does a frog want from you? Oh, dear father, yesterday when I was sitting and playing near the well in the forest, my golden ball fell into the water, and because I cried so much, the frog fetched it for me. And because he insisted, I had to promise he could be my companion. 
but I never thought he'd get out of the water. Now he's outside and wants to come in and be with me. Just then, there was a second knock at the door, and a voice cried out, Princess, princess, youngest daughter, open up and let me in. Have you forgotten what you promised? Down by the well's cool water? Princess, princess, youngest daughter, open up and let me in. Then the king said, If you've made a promise, you must keep it. Go and let him in. After she went and opened the door, the frog hopped into the room and followed her right to her chair, where he plopped himself down and cried out, Left me up beside you. She refused until the king finally ordered her to do so. Once the frog was on the chair, he wanted to climb onto the table, and when he made it to the table, he said, Now push your little golden plate nearer to me so we can eat together. To be sure, she did this, but it was quite clear that she did not like it. The frog enjoyed his meal, while each bite the princess took got stuck in her throat. Finally, he said, I've had enough, and now I'm tired. Carry me upstairs to your room, and get your silken bed ready, so we can go to sleep. This frog really wants a lot done for himself. His demands are a lot more than the first story. I wonder how hard it was to really get that ball if all of this is really an even trade. The princess began to cry because the cold frog frightened her. She did not have enough courage to touch him. And yet now, she was supposed to let him sleep in her beautiful, clean bed. But the king gave her an angry look and said, It's not proper to scorn someone who helped you when you were in trouble. So she picked up the frog with her two fingers, carried him upstairs, and set him down in a corner. I can just picture her picking him up between her thumb and forefinger and carrying the frog as far in front of her as she could with just this look on her face of disgust. Soon after she had got into bed, he came crawling over to her and said, I'm tired and want to sleep as much as you do. Lift me up or I'll tell your father. This made the princess extremely angry, and after she picked him up, she threw him against the wall with all her might. Good thing Peter wasn't around in these days. They would come knocking at her door so fast. Now you can have your rest, you nasty frog. However, when he fell to the ground, he was no longer a frog, but a prince with kind and beautiful eyes. So, in keeping with her father's wishes, she accepted him as her dear companion and husband, whereupon the prince told her that a wicked witch had cast a spell over him, and no one could have got him out of the well except her, and now he intended to take her to his kingdom the next day. I love that she pins this on her father. Well, my dad wanted you to be my companion. He said I needed to keep my promises. Plus, you're super hot. So yeah, I'll totally marry you. This totally worked out so well. And I wonder if the witch specifically picked this princess because she knew that she was a brat and was trying to teach her a lesson, or if any of the other king's daughters could have worked. Then they fell asleep. Did they really just fall asleep? And they're already sharing a bed, but are they already married? Because she says that she's accepted him as her husband. But I feel like they need to have a whole ceremony first. And in the morning, when the sun woke them, a coach drawn by eight white horses came driving up. The horses had ostrich plumes on their heads and harnesses with golden chains. And at the back of the coach stood faithful Heinrich, the young king's servant. He had been so distressed when he had learned his master had been turned into a frog that he had ordered three iron bands be wrapped around his heart to keep it from bursting from grief and sadness. But now the coach had come to bring the young king back to his kingdom, and faithful Heinrich helped the prince and princess into it, and then took his place at the back again. He was overcome by joy 
because his master had been saved. The coach got there very quickly. Could they tell that the magic had been lifted, or did they have to send a note? Because a note would have taken a little bit longer to get to Heinrich and the prince's kingdom. When they had traveled some distance, the prince heard a cracking noise behind him, as if something had been broken. He turned around and cried out, Heinrich, the coach is breaking. No, my lord, it's really nothing but the band around my heart, for it nearly fell apart when the witch did cast her spell and made you live as a frog in a well. The cracking noise was heard two more times along the way, and the prince thought each time that the coach was breaking, but the noise was only the sound of the bands snapping from faithful Heinrich's heart, for he knew his master was safe and happy. The End The moral of this story is be kind to animals. Don't be a brat, but even if you are, you may still end up with a rich, handsome prince as a husband. There are few differences between the first and the last version of the Frog King. Some dialogue is reworded along with some of the descriptive narrative, but nothing too drastic, as we have seen in previous stories. One line in the original version of the Frog King that I really do enjoy is after the princess has thrown the frog against the wall. It reads, But the frog didn't fall down dead. Instead, when he fell down on the bed, he became a handsome young prince. Well, now indeed, he did become her dear companion, and she cherished him as she had promised, and in their delight, they fell asleep together. That really makes me wonder what happened between those sheets. The first story was read from the complete first edition, the original folk and fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm, translated and edited by Jack Sipes. The second story was read from all new third edition, the complete fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm, translation and introduction by Jack Sipes. If you have a fairy tale you would like me to read aloud, you can email me at mythicalthepodcast at gmail.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at mythicalpodcast, where I post behind the scenes, updates, and clues to each week's story. If you like the show, please leave a rating and a review wherever you listen to podcasts, as I greatly appreciate it, and it helps other people find the show. Thank you for joining me today. I'm the narrator, and this is Mythical. Mythical.